It tastes like it. It tastes like it. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good. Hey, y'all stand with us and sing, God is so good. Here we go. God is so good, even when our water's not on. God is so good, God. song okay it's a brand new song it's called I thank God hopefully you know it's on the radio all the time but if not then hey let God bless you okay wandering into the night wanting a place to hide this weary soul this bag of bones I try with all my might I just can't win the fight I'm slowly drifting A vagabond Just when I ran out of road Met a man I didn't know He told me that I was not alone Turn me around, you place my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, cause you heal my heart, you change my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. But to believe my doubts are burning Like ashes in the wind So, so long to my old friends Burden and bitterness You can just keep them moving You ain't welcome here From now till I walk the streets of gold Sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. You picked me up, you turned me around, you placed my feet on solid ground. I think the master, I think the savior, cause you healed my heart, you changed my name forever free. The same. I think the master, I think the You picked me up, here we go. You picked me up, you turned me around, you placed my feet on solid ground. I think the master, I think the savior, cause you healed my heart, you changed my name, forever free. I'm not the same, I think the master, I think the savior. All right, we're going to sing out God is so good, okay, as, our, as part of the bridge. We sort of just added this, and we'll, we'll maybe sing the rest of that song next time. But we're going to sing this part, okay? Sing it out with us, just like we started. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. Think about it this week. I don't want you to think about anything else but God's goodness. Sing it out. God is so good. Lift your hands in the air. God is so good. And just sing it out. God is so good. Hey, let's sing that again. He's so good to me. Just think about it.
want nothing else. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good. You pick me up. You pick me up. You turn me around. You place my feet on solid ground. I think the master. I think the savior. Cause you healed my heart, you changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same, I think the master, I think the You picked me up last time. Cause you picked me up, you turned me around, you placed my feet on solid ground, I think the master, I think the savior, cause you healed my heart, you changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the Savior, I thank God. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a praise clap this morning. Man, thank him for what he's done. Man, what a way to begin. You may be seated for just a moment. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you for taking time to be here. If you would, take your uh, worship guide and open it up. You should have a flyer inside of here. You should have a flyer inside of here. Please take that. Please make sure you read through that. Um, on the back is a list of most of just about all the events for the month of February. So if you need a calendar, here it is for the month of February right here. So make sure you look at that. You got several things coming up, um, as you know. But uh, first, I want to let Patrick, if he would, Patrick, stand. If you would, man, share uh, your announcement this morning, please, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you, Patrick. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, make sure you do that. Um, also, just want to remind you, men, men in here, men, those of you are, are men, right after the service is over, if you would meet me down front here for just a few moments, we need to finalize a couple things for next Sunday, as far, I mean, next Saturday night for our Sportsman Fellowship. And um, I'll be saying more about that in a moment, but I know next weekend is a big weekend. Uh, for, for a couple of things especially, so uh, men, if you would, as soon as we get done, if you'll hang out right here for just a moment, and then church council, we'll have our meeting today as well, right after we get through with our service, right after I'm through with the men's meeting, we'll meet, um, so right over there in the fellowship hall, we'll do that, so make sure you know that also. Also, if you would, um, make sure that you see, I'll be talking more about it in just a moment, about Super Tithe Sunday, next Sunday. Um, looking forward to what God's going to do there. Um, make sure you see, just make sure you read the different things that are coming up there that's on that, that's on that flyer. So anyway, all right, any other announcements, Miss uh, Heather, Jim, anything? All right, all right. going to ask our men if they would be making their way forward as we take up our morning offering. So please make sure you read the back also of your bulletin. Explain, it explains what all we have going on coming up. So, Lord, thank you, God, for this day. God, may you grant us your grace upon our giving. Thank you, God, that we can give freely and that, God, uh, voluntarily. So, Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do. And, Lord, I look forward to next Sunday, next Saturday and Sunday, especially Saturday night and Sunday morning, Lord, what you're going to do in the lives of our church members, Lord. So, God, we give you grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Wandering into the night Wanting a place to hide This weary soul 
vagabonds I try with all my might I just can win this fight I'm slowly drifting Vagabond Just when I ran out of road I met a man I didn't know He told me that I was not alone Cause you picked me up You turned me around You placed my feet on solid ground I think the master I think the savior Cause you healed my heart You changed my name Forever free I'm not the same I think the master I think the savior You picked me you picked me up, you turned me around, you placed my feet on solid ground. I think the master, I think the Savior, I thank God. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Thank you, God, for these tithes and offerings. God, we thank you for just your grace and mercy in our giving. Lord, again, I pray and I echo that we're never more like you than when we give. And so, Father, I pray that they see with these tithes and offerings, God, that you will certainly multiply these as we take a step of faith in 2024, that, God, that we would give more than ever before. And so, Lord, I praise you and give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise clap this morning for our offering. That's right. All right. Hey, would you all stand with us again? The Bible says that who the Son sets free is free indeed. If God speaks freedom into our life, Galatians said it was for freedom that Jesus set us free. It was for freedom that we can walk and live in freedom. And who the Son sets free is free indeed. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in, oh, his love for me, oh, his love for me. The sun sets free, oh, it's free in me, I'm a child of God, yes, I His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for yes. me. Yes, He died for me. Who the Son sets free, oh, is free. In my father's house, in my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Who the sun sets free? Who the sun sets free? Oh, it's free. There's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. What a proclamation that is. Wow. In my Father's house, there's a place for you and for me. in my sin. Lost 
lost without hope with no place to begin your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began ash was redeemed only beauty heart was given a name by morning grew quiet my feet rose to dance when death was arrested and my life began oh your grace so free washes over I'm a prisoner no more. My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore. He canceled my debt and he called me his friend. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace. So free washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with you. Oh, it's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. displayed on a criminal's cross. Dark, darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hell. That's when death was arrested and my life began. But then Jesus but then Jesus arose with our freedom in hell. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me. You have made me new. Now life begins with It's your endless love pouring down on us. You have made us new. Now life begins with you. Oh, we're free, free, forever we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free. Forever, amen, when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, we're free, free, forever we're free. Come join the song of all the redeemed. Yes, we're free, free, forever, amen, when death was arrested and my life began. When death was arrested and my life began. When death was arrested and my life began, we're singing grace, grace, God's grace, grace that will pardon and cleanse. 
singing you know you're just getting that and that mindset where where God is just sort of resting on your heart whom the sun sets free is free indeed I mean if we ever really captured that wow wow God thank you thank you for your grace Thank you for your goodness. Thank you that you're so good. I thank God. If we're having a bad day, guess what? Start listing stuff that we're thankful for. It's hard to keep a bad attitude when you're being grateful. <laughs> Those things kind of are don't don't kind of work out. And God, thank you. That's why it says it, it's your will. Give giving thanks is the will of God in Christ Jesus. This is this is. God's will for us to give, part of it is to give thanks. Because that's the place, that place of gratitude, that place of remembering. We hold on to all the, the little stuff, relatively speaking, the little stuff that other people have done to us. And they wronged me, and they did this, and they did that. And God, you forgave us a, a debt that we could never, ever, ever, ever pay. But we hold people in jail for little stuff compared to what you forgave us of. So, God, give us that attitude of gratitude. Thank you for your grace. And, God, may we as, as believers and as sons and daughters of the Most High, may we offer that grace to others throughout our day. In Jesus' name, you can be seated. I um, got a little special guest up here to, to help us um, through this next song called Thank you, Jesus, for the blood. And I, I, and I will say, maybe you don't want to sing a special all by yourself, but maybe you'd join the team for a special, right? So that's an option. I just wanted to put that out there as a sort of an invitation that um, if you want to be a part, maybe don't want to be part of the praise team and commit to that whole thing, you don't really want to do something by yourself, I'd be happy to... Um, work work with you and in, in, in joining us and in, in doing a special. So that's what we're doing today with Jade and I thank you for, for joining us. I was a wretch, I remember who I was. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. Sin 
and separated the bridge was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you held me in your sight so you made a way across the great divide left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside and there at the cross you paid a debt i owe broke my chains freed my soul for the first time i had hope thank you jesus for the blood applied thank you jesus it has washed me white thank you jesus you have saved my life brought me from the darkness into glorious light Laid inside the tomb of sin You were buried for three days But then you walked right out again And now death has no sting And life has no end For I have been transformed By the blood of the Lamb Thank you Jesus for the blood of life. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life, brought me from the darkness into glorious light. There is no stronger than the one working power of the blood, the blood that calls us sons and daughters. We are ransomed by our Father through the blood, the blood. There praise team as always going to ask our little children to be making their way they can certainly be making their way out grateful for those that lead with these special children and 
man, they get to running and they are excited about getting to children's church. So anyway, I, I want to just, as we begin, I'm going to be preaching uh, just a couple more times when it comes to giving. But we have, um, you know, we did a testimony just a couple of weeks ago. And I've asked a couple to come and uh, uh, share. Uh, did I say sing? Did I say that? You didn't sing. They gave a test. Excuse me. They didn't come to sing. They sang. They came to give a testimony when it comes to giving. I'm sorry. I didn't want to freak them out. They got to sing. But uh, we have another one this morning. So I'm going to ask uh, Corey and Deanna, if you would, to be making your way up here. You know, when, when we uh, are asked to do something, sometimes, you know, it can be real. You know, I know. I understand that it can be a little nerve-wracking to come and stand up front of the church. But I appreciate these two very much, just as well as others. And um, I want you to be praying for them as they share. Um, I, just know that, uh, I just know that it can be. But here's the good thing. Here's what I know is going to happen. The Lord's going to speak through them today. And the Holy Spirit is going to, is going to use them today. So... Here briefly for just a moment, I want you to listen and listen intently, but I want to say thank you for doing this this morning. Oh, yeah, we need a microphone, don't we? Yeah, there we go. All right, y'all go ahead. I'm going to let Deanna go first. <laughs> uh, I am too, but I'm going to let her go first, and then I'll go behind her. This is definitely, I had a microphone on it, I know Corey's too, but when Brother Guy asked us to do this, um, we didn't immediately answer. <laughs> I told him to give us some time, and we, we prayed about it and talked about it. So um, we, um, I know some of you know, not a lot, but a few of you know, um, most don't, but back in um, June the 8th of 2022, Corey lost his job at no fault to him, quite the opposite. Um, he had been there for nine or 10 years and we were on a path, our path. We had a plan, our plan, and about, he was to um, set to retire in the next um, three to five years, five years most. And we, we felt like we were um, doing what we were supposed to be doing. We've been in church. We, we felt like, you know, we were, we were on our path. And um, all of a sudden, um, his job, he lost his job. And it's been difficult on us because the reasons of him losing his job was was like I said, it was a result of something that he stood up for and did the right thing and refused to do something he was asked to do that he didn't believe in. Turned our lives upside down. Um, his income, we were he was out of a job for about eight months, wasn't it eight twelve? 12 weeks, I'm sorry, 12 weeks. It was, it was a long time, 12 weeks is a long time. And uh, we found ourselves in a, in a position we didn't know what to do. Um, financially, it was very difficult. Um, we had saved and, you know, had, had some savings and, and all, but whenever you go from an income that you've been living and, and using and expecting, um, you know, and then it changes completely, completely changes. You, you try to, you have to figure some things out quickly. And um, we didn't understand it, and, and we, still, we still don't understand everything. Um, uh, we, we don't know why this happened, um, but I feel like it, we had a plan, and it wasn't God's plan. And... He's showing us things we've learned through this. Corey and I have had to um, make some 
changes, lots of changes in our lives, and um, but that's okay. Through all of this, we tried to continue to um, to give, and not just financially, um, but um, other ways. You know, our time and and different different areas. Um, and it's been it's been hard. We've we've asked. You know, we've we've been angry. We've we've wondered and asked God. You know, why 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 are you doing this? Um, we don't understand. He didn't deserve it. Um, he was doing the right thing, and then this happened. Um, but we have been so blessed in looking through back all this. Corey found another job. He loves his job where he's at now. The money's not there that we, we were used to, but that's okay because that's not everything. And we have learned that. It's not. It's not everything. Um, he's happier in his position. He has so much less stress. Um, just the environment is better on him. Um, and I think through that, God has shown us so much um, that we can't, we're okay, and we're going to be okay. And um, we, we really um, have learned through this and had to depend on him more than we ever have in our lives. And um, he's provided, he still provides, and I think that God took Corey out of where he was at I know there's a reason, and um, we just got to trust his plan, his perfect plan. It's not ours, but it, but it's his perfect plan, and um, I'm just, we're just thankful. We're just very thankful, so. So, Brother Guy told us we had three to five minutes, and I told him I think we got 20 minutes to here to go, but. There's one thing I just want to share. Um, a lot of people don't know what this is. Brother Guy probably does. This is a turkey call. I love hunting. Deanna can tell you. It's probably one of my idols that I shouldn't have, but I do have. But I had this turkey call made about 12 years ago. And inside of it, it says, God is my strength and power. My way perfect. Second Samuel 22 33. But this is in Psalms also. And just listen to that and reading it, and I've researched it. What God's telling us right there is that He's going to give us trials, He's going to give us rough roads, mountains to climb. But the reason He does that is so we're stronger when we come out on the other side of it. And God gave me a godly woman 31 years ago. I met her. 27 years ago, we got married next week. And she's our foundation. And without her, I wouldn't be here today. Thank y'all. That is just when it's from the heart and to be able to share that, to be able to share and be vulnerable in sharing um, personal stuff. Man, I just want to give a hallelujah. I just want to give a praise the Lord and thank goodness for God's grace because, I, you know, in their testimony, God, I know the Lord is going to use them to help others along the way. And you've already started today. And I say thank you. Man, what a, what a great job. You know, you won't hear about this on CNN. You won't hear about this on the newspapers. You won't hear about it on the radio. Because listen, that right there, that right there is a testimony to the true grace of Almighty God. That right there is a perfect example that being a Christian sometimes is not always easy, but God is always faithful. He is always faithful. And you know, when we come, we've been, we've been talking about, been preaching, 
out of 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 9, and I'm going to be out of that today and have this week and next week as we come to Super Tithe Sunday. But in that passage, if you recall, in 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, it talked about that the Macedonian church, I'm just paraphrasing, they could not wait to give. They were, very, they were in a poor society. They were in a poverty society, but yet they were faithful. And it says that they joyfully, joyfully couldn't wait to give because what they were doing, because it says they gave themselves to God first. And out of their relationship with the Lord overflowed abundant joy. And that is what we heard this morning from the testimony. Hey, we, we've, went, we've been through a very raw and hurtful time and a, and a, and a very, un, I mean, good night. What are you trying to tell us, Lord? All of that stuff. But yet, did you hear the words, but God's been faithful. God continues to bless. You know, we can never outgive God. I've said it for a while, I'll say it again, but we cannot outgive God. And next Sunday is a big day because we've called it Super Tithe Sunday. And you know what? There are circumstances out there that can that we say, Lo, I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this. I don't know how I'm going to be able to do that. Let me tell you something. Trust in Jesus Christ. Trust his spirit. And let's be faithful to bring our best gift no matter what. That we give voluntarily. That we give out of, the, out of what we have. We give out of our heart. And so I can't wait till next Sunday. But I must say, when, I, when, when the Lord lays something on my heart and we step off and take a step of faith, which we are, we're taking a step of faith, um, you'll be seeing in the coming weeks very shortly that we as a church are stepping out on a budget. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a step of faith. I mean, it is a step of faith. But we're running the race we're running, and we want to step out on faith. And walk. it's not a blind leap in the dark. This kind of, It's not a blind faith. We trust God. We've done what we're supposed to do like we need to do. And, and, and now here it comes to this year in 2024, and we've talked about running the race. And we've talked about it's not a sprint, a sprint, it's a marathon. And one of the ways that we run the race is to give, and we're growing through this. And watch how God grows us and and, and learning and going, going out there into our mission field and, and inviting people and, and, and talking about Jesus and representing Christ and doing all those things. But until, listen, until you step out in faith, your growth is going to be stunted. Your growth is going to be stunted, seriously. You know, you don't, you don't get wise in the Bible just because you grow in age. You get wise in the Bible because you're in the Bible. You study the Bible. You learn the Bible. You trust the Bible. You trust God's Word. We walk in faith. And this is probably going to be a stretch for many of us, maybe. It's always a stretch for me because my wife and I, we've been praying about what we're to give next Sunday as a one-time gift on that particular day, above and beyond possibly what we could even imagine giving in one setting. And that's what, what God lays on my heart is going to be different from what God lays on your heart because I'm not asking for equal sacrifice. I'm not, I'm not putting up on this screen, okay, I want everybody to give this amount. No, that's not how it works. It works because God lays on your heart. If I, if I, if, if for whatever reason... And I'm nothing wrong with setting goals, but if I, if I chose to say, okay, I need everyone to give this much, you're not going to, you're going to give begrudgingly, you're going to give uh, manipulatively, if that's a word, um, but it works. But, you know, it will change your life if I were to do it that way, but God, I want to let God change our heart and our life, that we come next Sunday, and we'll do it a little differently. But, man, we wanna, we're going to take up our best gift that we can give. And then from this point on, we have our commitment card. You know, one thing about goals and one thing about commitment, that if we don't know what we're aiming at, we won't hit it. And so this right here, next Sunday, you're going to have one of these. And on it, you're going to look at it. So be praying about it. 
But it says, I commit to give. And that word give is fluid because it's not just like Deanna said. It's not always about money. But in I commit to give more in 2024 by sacrificial giving, attendance in Sunday school and worship, and growing towards maturity in God's word. You know, we have some awesome classes. And I know I keep harping on it. And if you're not in a class, I encourage you. We have, we have the classes in place. And those small groups are so important. Not because we want to see how many we can have. But because we grow in those classes, Sunday school classes, we get to know each other. And when we have issues come up, we help each other. And we grow in our faith. And we have people praying for us. We have people that get, you know, that's how we get to know. And that's how we grow. The Bible says as iron sharpens iron. And I know it says as one man sharpens another. But when we're together, we sharpen each other's faith. And so that's why I say implore with everyone about those small groups because that's what we're here for if we're gonna, i mean we're here to worship we're here we, we don't just come in this room to just watch and spectate I, I mean i hope you learned that by now we come here to connect with god the best that we can that we know we can but really, well, let me take that back not the best we can god's going to connect with us are we ready to connect with him and offering up praises and singing and worship and giving and praying and all of that. So I want to encourage you. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> I must say I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. And somebody told me one time in ministry, because whenever I, whenever, let me just say this, there were times when I was green in ministry, I was very nervous about putting on an event. Didn't know how it was going to turn out. You remember, you remember Ken? You remember we wasn't long ago. Y'all know Ken, and we did. You know, I did this. I did revivals like not revival, but radical weeks. We've done it before, but I want to tell you the first time that I ever did, I was scared to death. I didn't know how it was going to turn out. I didn't know. And God said, God showed me, get out of the way. Let me work. You have prayed. You have prayed. Let me work. But, Lord, what are people going to think? <laughs> Believe it or not, even the preacher thought about that one time. What are people going to think? What are people going to think if I stand up here and share? What are people going to think if we don't have a good turnout? What are we gonna, people going to think? If, all these lists of things, and the Holy Spirit just taps on the shoulder every time. See, I told you. But I am, I, I am anticipating a God thing next Sunday. That we all come together. And I know we have people out. That makes me nervous. <laughs> that makes me nervous. We got people out this week. We got, you know, trying to lead us all in one direction. And, you know, I, and not just about the time, but our worship, about our Sunday school, about all those things. And, and folks, I just, it's just in me to lead and to um, anticipate God doing great things in this church. Because this is where God's got us. But God has always said, it's not about I. Holy Spirit says, would you quit saying I? But God, I'm not. Quit. And you know, when you walk by faith and you stand up and share a testimony and you get it, man, God blesses. And so today and next week, and in just a few moments, we're going to pray. Before we leave, I'm going, God's led me on my heart. For us to pray here at the end. But man, let, it's like, let's go. Let's get it. Let's get here. Let's bring our best gift to the Lord. Let's, let's do what God's called us to do. And what we're doing this, I know it's new, but it's just a jump start to the, to the year. Each year, God willing, I pray that this grows and grows and grows. That we come, and that doesn't mean that after it's over with, that we quit tithing and, and, and we quit. No, we, we, we must, we commit to giving even greater what God may do. And God may raise what you give because the more we give, listen, the blessing is not necessarily always money coming back. The blessing, as we see in Scripture, is Corey mentioned about his wife, about Deanna. They married. God brought them together. God put her in his life. I, where would I be today without my wife? 
Did he not? God bless me with my wife, or God bless me with my husband, and you're here. And you, it, it could be blessings of, 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 of a godly home. It can be, it can be blessings of, of, of children coming to know the Lord. God putting protection around your home. And, and, I mean, there's so many other things besides receiving. But the Bible says that if you sow generously, you'll also reap generously. So there is that, though. There are blessings. And, yeah, there are times where we think, man, how are we going to make it? And God provides that's because you're being obedient to his word. So take your Bible, turn to Malachi. Turn to Malachi. That's in the Old Testament. Malachi, it's the, la- uh, one of the, it's the last book of the, New T- of the Old Testament. The last book of the Old Testament. And today we're going to see from the Old Testament when it comes to giving, when it comes to what this called tithe, and I want to share with you this passage because I don't know if you've ever seen it this way, or maybe you have, maybe you haven't, but at least we have a principle in here. There's principles in this that shows us what we are to do and what God's Word says. And at least it shows us today how God feels about how God feels about giving. Now, of course. Malachi, this was written, there was, there was, you know, we had, you had the Old Testament law, and um, you read about tithes in there, and it said, give a tenth, give a tenth, and that, that was by the law, and let me say this, our goal is after this, I pray, that we're not, you know, and, you know, God's put in our heart, we've always taught our boys, we've taught our boys to give, we've taught our boys the tenth principle, the tenth of giving a tenth of what you have, uh, when you get your first check or whatever, and you 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 look at it and you you base it on on what it is, and then you give you give that ten percent. But we you know we're not under law, we're not under the law. But it's just a starting place. We make it. We, if we're not careful, we can make the ten percent a law, even though the New Testament does not give us a specific. But the Old Testament gives, certainly gives us, certainly, a minimum, not a maximum. Some of us may not be able to give a tenth right now. But what you can do, you can give a percent. You can give 2% or you can give 3%. God puts something on your heart. Trust Him. Trust in Him and see what He does. But today, I want to show you a principle, though, a principle that's very that can be very dangerous, all right? In Malachi, in Malachi chapter 3, I'm going to have to hurry through this, I know, um, but I'm going to try to go slow and peaceful. I have had people say, Brother Guy, just chill. We've got plenty of time. We don't have church on Sunday nights and all this, but man, I just, I don't know. I just, I just want us to make sure we got everything. So Malachi chapter 3, if you will, if you're there, Malachi chapter 3, look in verse 6. Beginning in verse 6, it says this, Malachi chapter 3, verse 6, it says, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. So what did they do, church? This is one time you can you just feel free to answer out loud. What did they do wrong? They said, ever since the time of your ancestors, what did they say? They turned away from what? They turned away from the promise. They turned away from God's word. They turned away. They disobeyed, okay? So he says, ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. And then he says this. He says, return to me. And then look at what he does. And then I will return to you says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Look at verse 8. Will a mere mortal man rob God? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how have we robbed you, God? How have we done that? And the Bible says, or according to these questions that the, that the people have asked, like this, this was a very sarcastic response from the people. It's like, how have we robbed you, God? 
And then God goes right into it, and he pierces the heart, and he says this, this is where you rob me in tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. He says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. See, here's the other blessings besides reaping other financial means. But look at this. He says, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops. That was their livelihood. God says, I'm going to, you test me in this. You be obedient and I will do this, this, and this. And he says, and the vines of your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Now I want you to turn quickly to Hebrews, back to Hebrews for just a moment, or to Hebrews chapter 7. So Malachi, of course, after the law came in place, and God says, you've robbed me, and then he says, in tithes and offerings, and he says, bring the tithe into the storehouse, tithe meeting tenth, and therefore those, you know, under the law, they were required to give 10% of their whole grain offering or whatever offerings they had, but that was under the law. But now I want to show you something that, that was before the law was put into place about the tithe, okay? Because some, we say, we say, well, you know what, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament law that we're not under the law, therefore we don't have to give a tenth. I, I understand that, but the bottom line is, is that we are to give and I just suggest for any of us where to start is to practice that 10% principle. Let God speak to you. But look at this, though. This was back before the law. Just verse 4, Hebrews chapter 7, talking about Jesus as Melchizedek. Melchizedek was a, a high priest from Salem. And in verse 1, it talks about that. Let me, I tell you, let, me, let me just go back to verse 1. This, this Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God most high. So that explains basically who Melchizedek was. And all throughout the new, this book of Hebrews, Jesus is our most high priest because this high priest, Melchizedek, was above the, the, the covenant priesthood of Aaron and the law and Moses and all that. This is, this is Jesus is our high priest who goes and who goes into the temple of God and who died on the cross for us. The, the, the temple was torn, the, the veil was torn from top to bottom and allows us to go in. That's what Jesus did. So that's, that's our Melchizedek. That's what Jesus did. So this is what it says. This Melchizedek was king of Salem and priest of God most high. He met Abraham returning from the defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abram, Abraham, excuse me, gave a tenth of everything. First, the name Melchizedek means the king of righteousness, Jesus. Then also the king of Salem means the king of peace. Without father or mother, without genealogy, without the beginning of ends, days of life, resembling the son of God, he remains the perfect high priest. And then look at verse 4. Just think how great he was. Even the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the plunder. Now the law requires the descendants of Levi who, became, who become priests to collect a tent from the people. That is the law from their fellow Israelites. But what he's saying here, I'm above that law. Jesus, I'm above that law. I'm above the law of Abraham, oh, excuse me, the law of, of Aaron and Moses. And he says, even though they are also descendants from Abraham. This man, however, did not trace his descent from Levi, yet he collected a tent from Abraham and blessed him who had the promises. And without debt, the lesser is blessed by the greater. In one case, the tenth is collected by the people who die, but in the other case, by him who is declared to be living. One might even say that Levi, who collects the tenth, Paid the tenth through Abraham because when Melchizedek met Abraham, Levi was still in the body of his successor. Now, what did all that mean there? I mean, that's a lot to chew on right there. Here's what John MacArthur says. Abraham was under no obligation, no law or commandment to give 
Melchizedek anything. He gave freely and generously, and he gave the best that he had, not his leftovers. He gave his choicest spoils to the Lord. Under grace, we are free of the demands of the law. The New Testament specifies not uh, specifies not, de- not, uh, not a definite amount or proportion of our money that we are to give to God. Not a definite amount. It's voluntary. But this does not mean our giving is optional and that it shall depend on our whim or personal feeling. It means that the basis of our giving should be our love and devotion to God which is gratitude for his inestimable gift to us. That's the principle. The principle is that we are giving to God. And here's the thing. God says, where do you rob me? Let me ask you a question today. Don't answer out loud. But let me ask you, have you ever been robbed before? Have you ever had something stolen from you? I don't know about you, but I have. Have you ever been has, has, has have you ever been robbed? When we don't give, when we don't give, do you know what we're doing? We're, we're stealing from God. I didn't say it. I didn't say I did That's what God's, God's word says. And we are to give graciously, voluntarily, not under manipulation. All I'm saying is today, through this today, is this, this, this tenth is the starting place. If you can't give a tenth right now, you can give something. Work your way up to the tenth or work your way above the tenth. Hey, it's not just, it, it's, there's, not a, there's not ever a maximum or a minimum. Hey, give out of what God lays on your heart. And if this is new to you, if it's new to us in giving and tithing and giving to the Lord, yes, the Bible says, the Bible says to give, to give. Give to the Lord because three things, real quickly, and I have not been able to go through all of this today. Again, I just, I just don't have time. It's just, I know it's so much stuff. But I may come back to it next week. But we are, we, you know, God's Word. Here's, here, here's just three simple, simple, very simple principles. God's Word is crystal clear on the purpose of tithing. God's word is crystal clear on the purpose of tithing, giving. His word, he says, where have you robbed me? Where have you stolen from me? Is what the Bible says. Each man, according to 2, like we said, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. And let me read it to you again. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So I don't want anybody to walk out of here today and say, you know what, all Brother G wants, all he talks about this month, all he does is blah, 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 talk about money and talk about giving and talk about, uh, 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 uh. I've preached what I believe the Lord has called me to preach. And I say this reverently and in, in, in the nicest way I can. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with who? Take it up with God. Take it up with him. Because I promise you, he will open those doors. He will, he will do things. He, it, you know what? It's not always easy. We, I, I know that. We know that. It's not always easy when we give. And <clears throat> Man, but that doesn't mean that God is not still God. That doesn't mean that we don't become obedient. Because, man, we're never more like Jesus when we give. And therefore, we have joy. Joy when we bless others. And when we bless God and God blesses us, we come together and God is faithful. But the the main thing this morning is, let's not rob God. (laughs) That scares the mess out of me. He doesn't say, he doesn't say, you know, 
let me say, slow down just a second. He said, where have you robbed me? He could have said a number of things. He could have said a number of things, where he, but he pointed to our tithes and our offerings. And he says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord God Almighty. And see if I don't open the doors. <laughs> he said, See if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be enough room to store it. God's always been faithful. He will be faithful to the end. When we give to God, it's a faith thing. Walking by faith. The tithe came before the law even existed. Salvation came through the blessing of Abraham, through the covenant relationship with Abraham, along with the old covenant, and it put us in the old covenant law with the purpose of bringing us to the new covenant. We are in the new covenant with Jesus. Jesus gave his all for us. Let's pray. Father, in these moments that we have together right now, Father, I know that you've led me to go in a different direction as far as the invitation this morning. This morning, this morning, I'm going to ask us, every head bowed and every eye closed, because I know the Lord's given me this. I know that we're called this morning to pray. So this is what, I, this is what I'm going to ask this morning. Um, let's, let, let's let Patty play, okay? Let Patty play. I'm gonna, when we begin this invitation, Patty, you just play something softly. Whatever you are going to play, uh, play, just play it softly, okay? And this is what I want to ask us to do, all of us. And that includes all of us right here, okay? Church family, I'm going to ask you if we can is to gather down here on these steps as a church and pray for next Sunday. Not only for next Sunday, but pray for this year that God would bless this church in an incredible way and I don't know how that's going to look but we if we're willing and we're obedient who knows what God's going to do the most, one of the most important things is salvation we pray for salvation for people to come to know Christ many things that God can bless but let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask God to do something a miracle next Sunday not because of anything we've done, but because we're in this together and we want to we be obedient to God and see what God does. Not only to pray to give, but that we'll be committed, we'll be committed to our church and seek out a Sunday school class and commit to worship. And that we will certainly, that we will certainly grow in the Word of God. But if we don't commit ourselves to God then we probably won't get to where we need to be sometimes we don't feel like it sometimes we just can't Lord I don't know how we're going to make it listen we're all going to we're always going to have those things that keep us we, from being here or, or doing what God's called us to do but hey as your pastor I'm all in I want to be obedient to the Lord I want to be all in for him so right now, I'm going to ask, if you can, if you're physically able, if you would, my Miss Patty, play softly. I'm going to ask you to come and kneel down here with me. And we're going to...